Welcome to In the Water Podcast. I am here with Michael. Michael has actually been to seven baptism events with us. And so today we're going to pick his brain a little bit about the baptism events, but also some deep topics that a lot of people don't talk about. We have some generational things that we have to go over, like the spirit of death and how that impacted our lives, and also our testimony. I want to start out by saying how we met. <laughs> so... It's an interesting one. It is. It is. I had a baptism event in Damascus, Virginia. Mm -hmm. It was the coldest water I have ever felt in my entire life. Oh, yeah. And I baptized you and your mom and your grandma and your sister. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And during that time, I think you were about halfway through the line. You wasn't towards the end or... No, we were pretty much in the middle. Yeah, Yeah. So it was... Right in time for me to feel the cold. Like, I was really cold. I had been in that water. It was before I knew what waders were. Mm. And I was really cold. But when you got in the water and I held your hands, I saw that you were a soldier. And I think I said something along the lines of, you're supposed to be a soldier for Jesus. Whatever it yeah. was that I had said was very impactful. Oh, yeah. And you knew that God was talking through me Yep. to you. While we were standing in line, I, uh, I don't know when you just, you, you called out to the crowd and yep. said, does any, if anyone feels free or they are able to, I would love to, the help. Right. Mm-hmm. I was by myself <clears throat> freezing cold water. It oh. was like 40 degrees water. It yeah. was 45 outside. Yep. And I think I baptized 74 people by myself and the, the river we were in, mm. like the current was just constantly shifting me. So I had to like plant my feet And so there was just so many things that about halfway through, I was broken. Mm. Like I was broken. And I saw this crowd in front of me and I'm like, if anybody would like to help, (laughs) I would love the assistance. Yeah. And like, you know, me and my mom and my family, we had a, we had a long drive back Yeah, and we had to leave that day Mm -hmm. because my mom's work and that's just the way things worked out. But when you called out to the crowd, I instantly felt like I looked around first. I was like, is anyone going to help her? And then I was like, you know, I didn't see anybody even nope. blink towards it. And I was like, I'll go in. <laughs> I told mom that I was like, I'll go in. Yeah. And she's like, I know. I wish we could help her. And, you know, just a bunch of logistical things yeah. and that kind of thing. But if it wasn't for us leaving that day and for us not having the equipment. You would have got right back I in. I would have got in. I would have jumped right in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. That's what it takes to be a servant of God mm-hmm. is that you put yourself aside, your fleshly, the way you feel. And not a lot of people can do that. You saw the amount of people there that day. Yeah. No one ended up helping. Mm-hmm. But from my call to action and my call for help, there were four of you from that baptism event yep. that showed up to the next one. Oh, yeah. And when y'all did, you drove like 10 hours. Like it was yeah. just to come and help. Yep. And that's because you, you obeyed the Lord. Yeah. And the Lord said, help her. Your mom heard that word oh yeah your mom heard help her yeah and she said it stopped her in her tracks and she looked around and she looked at me and she felt like you did just like wanted to jump in and help she did and i think that in those moments it's a pivotal moment in our lives where god's calling us and it's like do i help Mm. or do i not like you have a choice yeah you do and so you showed up at the next event we did a georgia and that one was that one was big (sighs) i that one was big. When we pulled down to just go to it, yep. the line was all, it was wrapped it, out to the road. It curved. And I was like, I'm going to turn around. <laughs> but obviously that was just the fleshly side of me. Yeah. I was scared in a moment. Yeah. I thought, how am I going to do this by myself? Yep. And I, I prayed, you know, and I had prayed for help. <laughs> I actually, as soon as we got back from Damascus, I was praying for help. I yep. was broken. Like my body hurt. I was just, I'm like, how am I going to do this? I'm one person. Right. And I prayed and I paced my porch and I prayed and I was like, you're going to have to send me help. Yeah. That's all it's going to be. And he had already planted that before I even asked. Like Mm. he already seen that I would require help. Mm. And so in Georgia, you and your mom showed up and you, you immediately fit perfectly. And it just, you went straight to the water. 
you were helping bring people in and out. And mm-hmm. I'll never forget looking up. And at this point, we had been in the water all day. Yeah. And most people are not used to fasting. Mm-hmm. Most people are not used to a lot of the way that we have to die to our flesh yeah. and not feel the things in the water because your body hurts. Yep. You're cold. Yep. You're tired. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I looked at you and I wanted to say, you know, do you need to get out? Or I think I did ask you, do you need to get out? Yeah, you did ask me. And yeah. you smiled so big and you said, nope, I'm good. And I just thought, wow, like you at your age to have humbled yourself enough to work for the Lord all day. It's just so rare. It's so rare to see someone younger in this generation that just answered the call Mm. for the Lord Yeah. rather than life. Yeah. So tell us about, tell us about how you have felt helping in this ministry for seven events. I don't even know if there's (laughs) words to describe it. I mean, it's, um kind of flips reality as you know as we're taught by the world on its head Mm -hmm. god has to open that uh door or he has to open your eyes to be able to see it Mm -hmm. and it's it's there and it's real oh yeah and um i've just learned so much like on the way and even more like just my personal relationship with god has grown because it's more me trusting him Mm -hmm. and then him kind of just tugging me along yeah we're going to get into something a little heavier. I want to talk about your past. Um, you know, I don't think you know, not a lot of people actually know when I was your age about right. my past either. But my whole life, the devil tried to put me in the ground. My mm-hmm. whole life. I was either sick. I was in accidents back to back. Um, and I didn't want to be here anymore. I actually tried some attempts. Yeah. Um, and I was in the hospital for it. Yeah. And so I was out of high school because of that. Like I was pulled out of school. And I had to recover and I just did not, I did not want to be here. And I never knew why. I just knew I was not happy. This world was just too much for me. Mm. I didn't fit in. Like there was so much to why I didn't want to be here. Yeah. And at the time, you know, you think in the fleshly realm that we live in right now, you're just, you're just depressed. Yep. That's what they call it. They right. slap the label on it. They yep. give you medications yep. and that's it. Yep. But for me, it was much more. Yeah. It was something trying to take me out. Yeah. Now that I do deliverance, I know what that something was. But back then, I had no idea. I didn't know that the spiritual realm existed. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was trying to be taken out. And so you've had some of the similar stories as I have. And so I think that it's very important to talk to this next generation because right now, the devil is upon this generation. He is yep. trying so hard to tear these kids apart. He's trying, and not just kids. Like there's, there's a lot of adults now that yeah. are depressed and they end up attempting things or even doing it. Yeah. And I know that we can't, you know, talk too in depth about it, right. but I think that the awareness for it is it's finally being shown right. because we're seeing so many people, you know, lose their lives from it. Right. And so now it is more pressing than ever then to talk about it. Yep. It's okay to talk about that we've been through it and that now we can help other people who's in the same situation. And so I know for me, when I feel it on someone in the water, I will feel and I've, I've distinguished it as or I've recognized it as a spirit of death. Mm. It's basically where the enemy is trying to take this person out. It is a calling on their life. Jesus may have made this person for some big purpose in his kingdom. So the devil's trying to take them out. And so the spirit of death is just like attached to this person and it just won't leave. It causes depression, anxiety, um, harmful thoughts. Mm. You know, I can't say the word, but those kind of thoughts. Um, And so it causes so much mental madness Mm. in your life. And then you don't have a purpose. You don't have a will to live. And so I think the coolest part about what we do is that we're able to be vessels enough that we felt it in ourselves. Mm-hmm. We've we've been through this, so now we can help deliver other people right. from it. And that's the whole purpose. It is. It is. Jesus can set them free. Yeah. Jesus set us free. Yes. And now we can go be the vessels yep. to set other people free. Right. So if you want to talk about your testimony, you can. Um, you can give me bits and pieces of what you went through and what brought you here. Early in my high school years, like yeah. transitioning from ninth to 10th grade, I, um, I developed a medical condition called a pilonidal cyst, which okay. typically is not that big of a deal. A lot of people have them, truckers and, um, a lot of people that have to sit down a lot, but for mine, it was, it was different than the, than the normal, uh, diagnosis. So usually they would, you know, they would cut it, drain it, and then they would sometimes take the, um, the infected skin out 
yeah. from flesh, and that way it doesn't grow back. Mm-hmm. Um, but for a lot of people, they just they're able to just drain it over and over again. But mine was uh, I let it I let it sit there for a while. It was about a week into it, and I knew there was an issue. Right. Um. Uh, and it was like on my lower back, mm-hmm. and it would bleed. Oh. And it was like a basically like a pinprick hole. Yeah. In my lower of my back, and it would bleed, and um. So I knew there was something wrong, and I went to the doctors, and they said, you know, it's not a big deal, whatever, right? We'll uh, see if you can just sit in the bathtub and let it go away. Yeah. I did that, and um, probably about two weeks in, the pain was unbearable. Wow. I remember riding in my dad's uh, car at the time because I was living with him, and I actually had to hold on to the handle to keep myself from sitting in the seat because of how painful it was. Wow. All the way to the right of the hospital. It was like a 30-minute drive. Yeah. And it was... um. Yeah, it was excruciating. But anyways, I had about seven surgeries wow. of them constantly cutting my flesh out. And not just a little bit. Yeah. It was about the size, if you can picture picture a axe wedge, it was about that. Yeah. And probably about that deep. And it was just a chunk of my flesh taken out every single time. And uh, man, we would pack it with gauze. We'd do what they mm-hmm. say. It would grow. It would almost close. And then it would get reinfected and they would have to take a chunk out again. And it was, it was constant. And I had doctors telling me all the time, you know, you're, this isn't normal. We're looking into it. And then also you might still have this all the way up until you're like 25. Wow. And I'm just like, what, like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. You're supposed to be the ones that helped me. (laughs) Yeah. And this went on for three years. Wow. And so it took my whole, it was embarrassing. I hated being at school because it just was I mean, I had a bandage. I couldn't yeah. do things that like normal kids would do. Right. And uh, so I kind of shut myself away from the world. The doctors, you know, like I said, they couldn't figure out how to heal me. They right. were saying I was going to have it until I was 25. Mm-hmm. Basically predicting, yep. right, that I was going to have this or issue. Or speaking a curse. Right. And, <laughs> oh, seriously. Yeah. And I just, you know, I kind of accepted that. Yeah. And um, that's when I gave up with the wound. Shortly after, after I was saved, yeah, right, mm-hmm. um, I was still very new to Jesus, yeah, right, and it takes a while. I it had does. the relationship, right, but the other things come after, yeah, right, building that relationship, building reading, that relationship, learning. Yeah. So my mom was continuously telling me, like, you need a church, you need a church. Yeah, I was hesitant on finding a church. I was like, I don't need a church. I just, yeah. you know, I'm on my own walk with Jesus, right. So my mom pushed me. And we ended up, we ended up finding a church, Good. which is connecting the family. Yeah. And we were like, well, let's go try it out. Yeah. And uh, we love the church. Good. We're there, you know, every Sunday. That's good. And uh, yeah, we love the pastor. While I was there, mm-hmm. first time going to this church. Wow. And I was sitting there and just this overwhelming feeling of like, I just need to give my medical condition to God. Ooh. Like I can't, the doctors aren't going to do right. it. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think it was actually from a place of pain. I was just tired. Yeah. Even though I was already saved. But he, yeah. So he took the depression. He took the anxiety. Right. right. He took those things from me and I was happy. Right. But there was still that pain because yeah. I still had it. Mm-hmm. And so I, you know, I turned to him and I, I just was, you know, I was with him alone and I just was like, if it is your will to heal me, mm. I know you'll heal me. Wow. I was like, and only you can heal me. And I just asked him, I just, you know, I just was continuously talking to him. And I just left it. Mm-hmm. I left it at that. Hmm. Two weeks later, my mom gets a call. New surgeon. Boom. Back in the surgery room. Oof. They clean out the wound. One more time. And they pack it with wet to dry. Dr. Marcheron, he like came to us on our next visit. And he said, we have a new medical product that we just came, that we just came in. Mm-hmm. He's like, you're basically a guinea pig. It worked. And it was actually fish skin. Funny enough, yeah. That is hilarious. And so they uh, they put it on there. So you're scimmered. part fish. Part fish. <laughs> <laughs> think... No wonder you like the water. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. you know, it was just really cool. Cause... That's amazing. And then after it worked on me, yeah. Dr. Marjoran was like, we're going to uh, mass buy it yeah. into our hospital. Wow. And use it. For other people. For other people. So your pain and suffering probably helped a lot of other people. Right. I know and it's hard with to see that, it that way, but yeah. God also healed me. Also, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Your faith. Your faith in knowing that it was going to work is a lot of the healing, too. Like, I know the product obviously worked really, really well, but I had the same God. kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 
Mine was feeding tubes. I had feeding tubes for a long time. They shove them down your sinuses and they go all the way down in your stomach and they hurt. And so I had a lot of, a lot of medical trauma like that too. Yeah. But mine was the same sort of like, uh, there was only one surgeon in the whole United States at this time that could take my case and fix me. Yeah. See, that was it. Isn't that funny? Yep. Yeah. And he did. He saved my life. And after he did, he retired. And so he was able to literally save my life. Like God guided me there right in time, yeah. saved my life. And then he left. I think that in those moments, like God, I know that he hears our prayers all the time. Oh, absolutely. But there is a moment where we change, where we have enough faith. Yeah. And it's like the, the scripture that says, when I, when you look to this mountain and tell it to move, it will be cast into the sea. And right. there's moments where you look at your mountain and it's too big. And you're like, I cannot move this mountain. Like it's yeah. a mountain. And then there's moments to where you're like, but God can. And yeah. then it's it. Like you have enough faith that your yep. mountain's going to move. And it does. Yeah. And so I think that's awesome that God radically rescued you. Yeah. You know, in the time that you, and then now you were using your testimony not only the fish skin product that you tested, I know. but you're using your testimony and you're showing people that they can have a life. Yes. They can still have a life. You do not have to give up. Nope. That It doesn't matter what your conditions are. You yeah. are not stuck there. God can heal anything. He created these bodies. Right. He can heal any part of them. Yeah. And I think that that's something that we forget in our pain. When we're in our pain, we get in this mindset of it's mine. Yeah. Like it's ours to bear. Right. But it's not. Like God can take it. Yeah. We just have to have faith. Yeah. So I think it's really awesome that God not only radically saved you and I, but he also healed us. Yeah, he did. And yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah. And now we spend our life in service to him. Yep. To try to go help heal other people. Yes. Through our hands and feet. Yep. <laughs> so it's pretty awesome. Sometimes sometimes healing is instant. Yeah. Like sometimes we see it in the water where healing is like that. Yeah. Sometimes it's more of a journey. Yep. Sometimes it takes that person going and following Jesus after that to prove, you know, right. sometimes it takes their faith. Or even just and, a call out to him. Yeah. Right. A reliance mm -hmm. on him. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. That's incredible. I mean, that's incredible that God, number one, sees us. I know. No matter what our little pains and People aches are. People think he's so far away. I know. And he's not that. He's as far he's... away as you make him. Yeah. That's big. Mm. But he is. He's as far away as you make him. You can draw near. Yeah. Or you can not. Right. And that's our choice. Yeah. You know, I just didn't, I didn't mesh with the world. People were mean and disgusting. Yeah. And I also didn't fit in. Yeah. And it just wasn't, it wasn't for me. So I, I went by myself, you know, yeah. and, uh, I'm knowing what I know now. I know that was Satan's plan all along mm -hmm. was to put me in loneliness uh -huh. and solitude. And, uh, I just, you know, he threw everything he could at me. Mm -hmm. And there was a moment, it was a moment of me just giving up. Yeah. I stopped packing the wound. I just let it rot. Wow. And um, God sustained me too because it should have killed me. Wow. Because I left it unattended. Yeah. There was no wound care. There was nothing. And it just stayed the same. It didn't get worse. Hmm. It didn't get better. Yeah. But it didn't get worse. Man, you can just name everything that the devil was throwing at me. I was I was drinking. I was smoking. He was pulling me into a dark pit and that's the only way I can describe it. Yeah. And I just would, I mean, I seriously would come home from school and I would sit there at my desk and I would wallow. In my sorrows. Yeah. And it was like, it was, it was such a deep, like hurt. Darkness. Yeah. 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 Every single night. There was one night that it was a, it was a tipping point. I had to walk to my bus stop every morning. It was about a mile to my bus stop. Wow. So I had a lot of time of thinking. Yeah. And I just was, I didn't want to be here anymore. Yeah. I had no, I had no desire to live. Yeah. I didn't want to. It just, there was only pain and, and misery here. Yep. So again, one night there was, um just a tipping point and last thing that the devil could throw at me and he tried to pull me into um some type of demonology mm. learning about demons and yeah. their names yeah and um kind of making a deal with them kind wow. of thing yeah and that very night man i don't know what happened i was i was just about to get into it and he just he came down with his hand and he just grabbed me and just yanked me up and I felt him so strong and he just grabbed me. Jesus. Yeah. And he yanked you out. I was at the bottom of the well. I was at the bottom of the pit and he reached down and grabbed me and pulled me up wow. and that night I threw everything away. Mm. In, in one night. I didn't leave anything. Yeah. And uh, you know part of me was like leave some of the stuff or whatever and, yeah. I, and I was like you know I had mm -hmm. convictions about it. I was like no. Out. Yeah. And, um, 
and and then Jesus was just he just me and his relationship just formed. Yeah. It went from me knowing about God Ooh. and knowing about Jesus to me knowing Jesus. Yes. Amen. And it was a personal relationship, mm-hmm. almost as if I've seen him in person. Yep. That's it was like that immediately. That's so many people are missing that. Yeah. They know about Jesus. Yeah. They might sit in the pew every Sunday, but it is knowing him personally that's going to save you. Mm-hmm. So then where did you, what from there? I just kept following him. Yeah. It, it slowly went over time of him convicting me about different things. Yeah. Reading your Bible. Oh, yeah. 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 And Learning. And I was in my, you know, despair. Yeah. You know, I was actually walking around with like murderous intent. Yeah. Around my school. It didn't even have to be people that did anything to me. Yeah. I just hated all of them. Anger. It was so, it was yeah. so angry. And um, then, you know, with my new relationship with Jesus, I was walking around thinking like, Okay, now you're showing me like people. Yeah. Like these are your your people. Mm-hmm. And um, he would speak to me mm-hmm. in the word, but also audibly. Yeah. And you know, my at my uh, time, you know, my dad grew up religious, mm. right? Religious. Right. He was just, you know, he hear, he heard me out, but he didn't really like. He was trying right. to see like how how deep are you into this? Uh huh. And I was telling him, I'm I'm like I really can hear him. Yeah. <laughs> I really <laughs> can. Like, mm-hmm. I know. Yeah. And I'm you know I'm trying to explain this to him. And I'm like, well. They don't know if they don't know. Right. And at this whole time, he's just, Jesus is just giving me convictions. And like, he, uh, I was, you know, really bad with cussing. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm just going to stop cussing. Amen. And I was like, Jesus is going to help me. Yeah. And, um, slowly over time, I would, I would cut back and less and less and less. And eventually I just didn't, wasn't even my vocabulary. That's amazing. And then sometimes I'd have slip ups. Mm -hmm. And when I did, I would just, I'd feel so bad. Yeah. And I'd be like. I'm so sorry. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. That's amazing. And he, you know, he got me better with, um, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, like being social again. Social anxiety you had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just talking. Yeah. Right. Finding my voice. Mm -hmm. Because I wouldn't speak. Right. Like I was, I was just quiet all the time. And so, yeah, he just really gave me my confidence and, you know, without the cussing too. Yeah. It's hard. Oh, I know. Because your sentences are like. Yeah. Half of them are just cussing, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, you know, how am I going to make sentences without a cuss word? You yeah. Know? But he fixed it, and he did it. I think a big part of what you were saying about it's almost like an identity crisis right now mm-hmm. where if the devil tries to make you not know who you are yeah. or not be happy and not want to be in this world, then he's got purpose. you. Yeah. yeah, without purpose. If you don't know who you are in Christ, then you don't know who you are at all. Yeah. And it's like you're lost. You know, we are all created to seek our creator. And mm-hmm. if you're seeking and you're not finding him, then you're going to find the worldly things, the wrong things of the world, because you're still seeking right. something. Right. And so you find stuff that temporarily sustains you and it is, it's not going to help. Like it's going to, you're still going to be sad. You're still going to be sorrowful. Yep. And that's what you went through. You went through finding like, Hey, can this help? It yeah. might've helped for a minute, yep. but then it didn't yeah. it wore off. Oh yeah. And it's like that with everything that we try until we meet Jesus, yep. until Jesus pulls us out of it. Yep. But there are a lot of people that can't see that. Mm-mm. They've never experienced it. They don't know what the Lord even sounds like They're yeah. you know? And so it's a big deal that you, like the Lord radically saved you. Oh, and that is huge. Yeah. Like it's and it's happening to a lot of people right now. Yep. There are a lot of people that are radically waking up, being saved, and they're turning their lives around. They're done with this world. They're ready to just full send for Jesus. Yeah. And it's beautiful. And what we get to do now is we get to take our testimony, the things that we went through, the w- the way that we felt. Yeah. And we get to see that in people coming to the water. And then we get to help them overcome it. And it's it's truly the most gratifying thing you could do because you're humbling yourselves in the moment anyway because you're you're tired, you're painful, like the the water is Oof. and so many people see it as I know that it looks glor- glorifying. Right. Like it is. It's amazing. It's an, yeah. But they just see the glory. Sometimes yeah. you see the videos and it's like, "Oh man, you guys have the coolest job." It's amazing. Job. It's, it's a uh, I mean, it's it a is. miracle, right? It is. It but is. But it will break every part of you. Every single part. Every of part. You. It will test Yep. Everything that you have uh-huh. and that you thought you had. Exactly. It will test how true you are to the Lord. Because mm-hmm. if you if you were not true to him and you were not doing it for him, yeah. we've seen people come into our ministry mm-hmm. and we've seen them have like arrogance or pride or anything. Yep. If it is for themselves, yep. it reveals itself very quick. Very fast they are gone. Yeah. And it's those humble servants of the Lord like you mm-hmm. 
that stick around. And I know without a doubt, like you, God raised you up for this, for such a time as this. Like it's your time to be the vessel. It's your time to show people Christ through yourself. And that is so hard for so many people because they want people to see them. They, you know, me, me, me world. We live in that selfish mindset of a world. And it's like, no, listen, see Jesus through me. Like I want you to meet Jesus. And if you can meet him through me, then let's do that. Yep. And so I think that's really cool at your age that that is, that's your mindset. That's what you think. I don't want, I truly mean this too, is I don't want anybody to perish. Yeah. We serve a merciful and graceful God. We do. I like to think that no one will perish. I know. I, I mean, know that's not the case. Well, the Lord says that he doesn't wish for anyone to perish either. Right. And I know that he doesn't send us to hell. He doesn't yeah. send anyone there. Right. It's we our, send ourselves. Yeah it's, our, yeah, it's our choice. But if we can intervene, if we can use our lives to save people and yeah. snatch them from the gates of right. hell, why wouldn't we do it? Exactly. Like that is, and that's how everyone should be that yeah. are Christian. Yep. If people call themselves a Christian, they should be out there working for Christ. Yes. That is part of your job. Yep. It is part of your job to spread the gospel, to save other people. Yep. And it's just unfortunate that people are complacent. Yep. There are complacent Christians right now that are just happy sitting in the pew, being filled a tiny bit yeah. once every Sunday. Yeah. And then they go about their lives the rest of the week. Yep. And it is unfortunate yeah. how it has progressed. Mm-hmm. And so when we see movements like ours and mm-hmm. we see these revivals that we're doing, these meet me in the water revivals, and we see hundreds of people coming to them, the first thing that the churches think is, oh, they're a radical group. And they think, oh, they're just... There's something wrong. And I'm like... How do you not see the fruits of it? And also, obviously the fruits of it, because fruitless deeds you can see. Like the people who are not doing anything. Or if they're bad, you see those too. Right, you can. But the Bible specifically shows us the life of Jesus. And the life of Jesus was going. Mm -hmm. Jesus went from town to town. Oh, yeah. He did not stay complacent in one place. And it's mind-blowing that people think that what we're doing... Is anything wrong right. or against the church? Right. I'm like, we're not against you. You're against us. Yeah. You know, like we're for you. We're, we're oh, for churches. We, yeah. oh, <laughs> we love churches. But churches also kind of condemn us. Yeah. And it's just because they don't understand. We often get this where people will be going to a church for a while. Mm. They'll come be baptized by us. And then they'll go back to church and their pastor's mad. Yeah. And I'm like, why did you, why'd you do that? And I'm like, why are you not rejoicing? Seriously. Why are you not so happy that this person is baptized? Is baptized? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think it all, every bit of that boils down to the selfish mindset that we talked about. It is so many people in these days that is self-centered. It's self-love, mm, self-care. Yeah. And your generation and the generations after you are being raised up in that mindset yep. to think that everything revolves around themselves. Yeah. All of it. It is. And it's like, no, <laughs> Jesus did not teach us that. In fact, he teaches us the opposite. He needs people like you that are bold, that are not afraid, that are ready to go and answer the call. Everything that I am and, and, you know, who I am is because of Jesus. You, you were going to the military. Was you pretty? Oh, I was, that was the plan. Yeah. That was, that was a (laughs) solid plan. Yeah. Because. Your parents are military. They're military. Mm -hmm. My dad, you know, works with the DOD. Yeah. So he's working with the Coast Guard all the time. Mm -hmm. That and the Navy. Yeah. And, you know, he knows the benefits of the Coast Guard. Yeah. Uh, Coast Guard's awesome. Mm-hmm. There's like, uh, there's, I mean, probably one of my favorite branches actually. Yeah, now that I know awesome. so much about it, yeah, that was the solid plan. And yeah. I, you know, I needed something after high school mm-hmm. to get ready because I didn't want right. to stall out. I didn't want, right, you know, to just be sitting there. So, Coast Guard was it. Yeah, and then you came to be baptized. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. When you were baptized, I, I'll never forget though. Um, sometimes God will tell me that person is going to be working for me like i will know not me me, but jesus right and i will know like jesus says this person is going to be working like this person right here and i will just know without a doubt that someone i'm going to see them again like it's it's without a doubt and i know now that you've been to so many and you've worked at so many Mm -hmm. we can always tell yeah and it's a person that god is about to radically change yep they are standing in line for this baptism they have no idea what's about to happen (laughs) yeah like god is really about to deliver them from all the pain, yeah. all the problems, yeah. all the temptations, the trials, the things they've been through, and all the heaviness that they can't handle anymore. They're mm-hmm. about to lay it at his feet, yep. and he's going to transform them. And so I think it's really cool when they are baptized and certain people are raised up out of that water. They're changed forever. Oh, yeah. And that was you. Like, you were you were raised up out of the water to a new creation. Yep. And now it's like, okay, I thought I wanted to go do what everyone else is doing. Right. I thought I wanted to follow the path of, okay, how am I going to make money? 
How am yeah. I going to have yeah. a future? Right. You know, because we're also raised up to think that we have to be somebody. Yes. We have to make something of ourselves. Yep. And so you, that's your mindset after high school is how am I going to make a name for myself? Mm-hmm. What am I going to do? Yeah. And then for you to get radically saved and baptized and then be like, oh, I want to work for Jesus. I can imagine that caused some conflicts a little bit. It mm-hmm. had to. Have. There had to be people that looked at you and been like, Michael, have you lost your mind? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. My, pretty much my whole family. Yeah. yeah. It had to be that way because they don't understand yeah. the spiritual mindset. And it is hard unless you've, unless God has shown you the difference in flesh and spirit. It is hard for anyone to distinguish that. It's yeah, hard for someone to, look. to even understand it because they don't know any different. No, they don't. But you can still educate. It's yeah. just, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, something actually interesting that happened in my baptism Yeah. is actually when I, when I stepped in the water, mm-hmm. you looked at me and you like looked straight in my eyes mm-hmm. and you said, I already see the Holy Spirit in you. Yeah. I couldn't word it. I don't think you spoke to me. If you did speak to me, it was very little. Very little. <laughs> I think I said, the only thing I said was, I need help to carry my cross daily. Okay. And then you just went crazy in the <laughs> prayer and the Holy Spirit just swept through. And, yeah. you know, in that prayer, the water was freezing. It was it so was cold. It was so cold. And in that moment, you started praying. The water got warm. Everyone said that in Damascus. Yeah. Every single person said that. It was warm. That. It was wow. warm. I could have stayed in there. That's it was wild. warm. And... I just remember when my eyes were closed, I just felt like this, like this light come mm-hmm. through and it was cloudy. Oh yeah. It was cloudy. It was yeah. a wind chilly cold it was day cold. <laughs> it, on top of the cold water. Yeah. And, um, I just the remember warp. seeing the light and the warmth and then I could hear the water running. Yeah. And it was just, it, it was something, it was something else. As soon as I would hold their hands and, and I would start praying, I mm-hmm. knew the Holy Spirit was filling them. I knew that the light was being shown through them. Like mm-hmm. I knew that I was able to you know, to help yeah. them feel the Lord. Mm-hmm. And there's so many people that do come to the waters never felt that. They've never felt his light. It is so hard to explain to people of what it is to be a vessel. <sighs> Essentially, a vessel <laughs> is that we are standing here in our flesh, but yeah. we are not thinking with our own brains. Nope. It is not us. Nope. And the words are coming from the Holy Spirit. Yes. And so when I try to explain that to people, I grab their hands and I so badly want to be like, this is going to be weird, but I know you, you know, yeah. uh, this is going to be weird, but you know, the Lord created you mm-hmm. and he knows you. Right. Therefore, he's going to give me the knowledge to know you in these moments so that I know how to free you. Yeah. And so that's what happens in the water that mm-hmm. people don't understand. Yeah. So as soon as I hold your hands, I know whatever it is that you've struggled with, it's, it's mind blowing. There's so many things that I could even get wrong. And I'm like, are you sure this person's been through that? It's scary. But once, yeah. Once I say it, it's like that person, like whatever it is, breaks off yeah. and it's gone. Yeah. And then it's buried. We bury it in the water. Yep. And so baptism itself is so much bigger than anyone thinks. I cannot. I know. I cannot with my pastor, with all I the other know. pastors. It's not just a show of faith. It's not just an outward sign of faith. No, it's not. And that's not. what they call it. Yeah. They say it's an outward sign of faith. It's And I'm so like, where does more. it say that in the Bible? Right. Where does it say that it's an outward yep. sign of faith? Yep. It never says that. Yep. It literally says, repent and be baptized and yep. you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yep. That is what the Bible says. There's it does. so much baptism in the Bible. So much. And it's so crazy at why churches have watered it down so, so, so much. much. I can't even stand to sit through it anymore. Like I, I was going to church and I was church hopping, trying yeah. to find a church that I could just sit in. I'm like, Lord, just let me, cause I need to be filled too. I'm yeah. always pouring out yeah. and I wanted to go to church. I wanted to sit there in those pews and I wanted to be hit by the message. And I watched a baptism at the church and I had to firmly plant myself in that seat I bet. or I was going to get up yeah. and I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. This is not your ground. This is not meet me in the water. <laughs> yeah. They're not, they're uh, nothing's was, happening. They're just nothing. getting wet. They literally just got wet. They, yeah. they baptized. Yep. They didn't pray before. They didn't pray after. And when they were leaving out of the water, it was like a golf clap. And I was like physically planting myself down like, Kayla, this is not your church. Oh, man. <laughs> but I had to because otherwise I was going to say, listen, like the Lord needs something from this. Like yeah. he needs to be able, if you're not feeling the Lord, then why, why are you doing it? Like, what is the purpose if you don't feel the Holy Spirit? Yeah. What is the purpose in you being baptized if it's just a show? Yeah. You know, like exactly. the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus like a dove in yeah. his baptism. Yeah. Why would we not expect that? The Bible told us. Like, why would we not expect someone to receive more than just getting wet? Yep. 
anyways. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, it gets me fired up every time it just thinking about too. it. I know, because yeah. I just want to shake people awake. I want to yep. shake the churches awake. My generation and your generation, they don't want to go to church. Nope. Like they want nothing to do with it. Mm-mm. And I understand, in a, right. essentially, because they've pushed them out. Exactly. But now it's like, how do we go and how do we make a difference? Like, how do we work for God in the way that he needed them to do? We, you have, know? To show, like, we have to show them God's love. I know. So with our revival, we are so by the book. I think that we, if anything, people think we're too much by the book. Yeah. Because we literally take scripture and we apply it. Yep. You know, and if you, you will know them by their fruits. Yeah. And you can see the fruits. We have baptized over 2,000 people this year. Wow. Yes. And and mind you, it's not like we have five pods of people baptizing out here. Yeah, like no. we're in there all day. It's yep. us. Yeah. It's the main baptizing people and that's it. Also part of their yes, obedience. It is. By them listening to the Lord and, and feeling that tug on their heart and they're going. Mm-hmm. If they go meet him, he's going to meet them right there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You have so many things that God has shown you that you can do. But one is going to be to reach the people that the church has turned away. Mm-hmm. It's going to be to reach the people your age that are lost, confused. They don't want to be here. They're scared. Yeah. They're trying to chase this fleshly life of obtaining earthly things. Doesn't work. And those kind of people are who you are going to make the biggest difference on. The way I look at it, a lot of times the things that you go through that the devil tries to keep you down on are things he doesn't want you to do because you have a purpose for it. So like you didn't like to speak, right? Right. Probably because you need to speak. <laughs> I Funny yep. you said that too, because yeah. I've had many times where yep. the Lord has given me a word and it was, a, well, I say a word, but it was, you know, obviously yeah. more, but yeah. it was open your mouth. Right. And Ooh. he's continuously saying that to me. Yep. He says, open your mouth. Mm. And, um, and look he's, at work, you now. he's working. He's working. <laughs> look at you now opening your mouth on a podcast. Yeah. Like there's so much breakthrough that you've done that I don't think you even realize. It's stuff that God has given you strength, courage, and determination to do. Oh, absolutely. And now it's like, here you are. Like you're you're really working for this ministry that yeah. is changing people's lives. Yeah. Like we are traveling. We are going state to state. Yeah. To find everybody we can to show them Jesus. Hopefully eventually countries. I know, right? We do we have a lot of requests for like Canada, Australia, <sighs> Australia, Australia with the spiders. Giant spiders. <laughs> and everything poisonous on the earth. <laughs> Australia, I thought that was the Amazon. Australia is terrible. I didn't know that. Oh. Okay. Oh. I'm gonna have to research if we oh, go yeah. over there. Oh yeah. I mean I, know. I don't even want to touch the beaches. <laughs> I'm so serious. There's there's things in the water that open up like a bear trap. It's really? Like a fish. And it sits in the sand, and if you put your foot in there, whoosh, oh no! Yeah, it's not good. Well, you know what? That's that's we would be in the water. So hopefully, there's fresh, <laughs> fresh water. Hopefully, it's not all ocean water. There's been so many of these that have their own special yeah. impact. So many things yeah. happen mm-hmm. and miracles. There's stuff oh, miracles. that we literally no one would believe us. Oh, I know. And it's like if we were to tell people, it's like straight out the Bible. It is. <laughs> like, do, do you remember in Ohio the person that came in a wheelchair and left without it? Yep. And it's like, what if we were to put that on the news? Everyone know. would know. But we don't because it's not it's not something that I don't typically want people to just come to the water for healing. healing. Yeah. I want them to come for Jesus. Right. I want them to know that yes, Jesus can set you free. And he will heal. But he will heal you. Yeah. But you have to be ready to walk with him too. Right. You know, yeah. it's not a temporary like if he frees you from something, yeah. you know, you don't just go run back to your old life. Like yeah. this is a, a step in your journey. Yeah. Look at you drinking your L8 from Kentucky. <laughs> I love it. So good. So now that we're on this mission, yeah. God has us set forth. I know that we have so much more to do. So it much. Seems it's like actually really exciting. It is. There's so much more ahead of us than we've done. And we've done a lot. Yeah. But the Lord is pressing. Like, I feel like the end of time stuff, it is, it is very pressing. I feel very pressed to go forth. Yeah. And so that's why we don't stop. That's yep. why we continue to do these. Yep. So where do you think... Where do you think this path is going to lead you? I have a big imagination. So <laughs> I don't know. But definitely, I think it's just going to be more an increase. Yeah. Um, other countries. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably somewhere to start. Except right? Australia. Except Australia. <laughs> at least. For now. For now. We have no fear, Michael. I know. <laughs> the Bible says, do not fear. Do not fear. And do not be yeah. afraid. I know. But like, it's, so many times. It does. It does. Yeah. We but, can break our fear of things. but. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you um, think we'll we'll probably be in the United States for a while. Just, yes, until just we're because, hopping around a little bit more. Yeah, we have so many people that are still hungry. Like Even in the same states we've already been. I know. 
after we leave. I know. It's like as soon as we leave, people say, I didn't know y'all were here. Yeah. And I'm like, no. Okay. We don't really advertise. That's mm. the thing. I'd put up a flyer, but that's all I really do. Yeah. Um, so people either have to check our website or they have to check the pinned flyers. Right, and that's right. all we do. Yeah. And God has increased it this much. Yep. So it's like, yeah, we're we're going to keep doing this. Like, we're going to keep just putting our flyer out and, you know, wherever God leads us. Yeah. And the cool thing about where he leads us and me planning these things, mm -hmm. a lot of these places I've never been. Yeah. I've almost, like, I've been to the States, but I've never been to the water locations until that day. Mm -hmm. And it is every bit of what we're doing is faith. Yeah. It is faith in action. Yep. It is, I have so much faith that God had not only set up the perfect place, yep. but that I don't even have to go check it out. Nope. Like, I know that it's going to be perfect. And so I think it's very cool to see where we do end up. Yeah. It's even a surprise to me. I know. <laughs> yeah. Can I tell you how I feel about it? Yeah. I really think, or I don't think, I I, I already have uh, given my life to Jesus completely. Yeah. Like, to the point as in, like, my future. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, this this life isn't mine. No. So, for me personally, I'm... I'm just ready to go. Like, this is all I have. Like, this is, yeah. I mean. This is the mission. Yeah. The mission. This is the mission. Yeah. And, I mean, everyone can see it. Yeah. We're in, we're, we're running into the end times. Mm -hmm. And we there's are. a lot of prophecy being fulfilled. Yes. Amen. Especially according to Revelations. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's stuff about that all over across yeah. the Bible. But, um, when things go south and people are hiding out, I want to keep going. We're ramping up. We're ramping up. And he, he put this ministry here mm -hmm. at this time yep. to build us up to the point where we're going to be able to go, even yeah. when we're being persecuted, oh, even absolutely. when we're being followed and chased, and yep. we will still go to the people mm -hmm. that are in need spiritually. Absolutely. Yeah. This death here fleshly is, mm -hmm. is, is temporary. It's, yep. it's a, it's a spot in the timeline. Mm -hmm. Eternal death is, is eternal. And, I got cold chills as you said that. Yeah. So I really think that that's where we're headed. That is a strong, that was a strong word. From the Lord. I know it was. It is. That is where we're heading. Like we yeah. are, we are seeing it unfold before our eyes. Yeah. We are seeing this generation that is coming up. They are, they don't know who they are. No. The identity crisis in this world right now is not talked about enough. Yeah. They are literally acting like cats and dogs in a school. Yeah. Like they have litter boxes in school now, Michael. Everyone is craving that attention yeah. and the self kind of thing that, that we talked about before. Yeah. And it seems like this generation is going downhill. Oh and, yeah. Fast. But. But. Then there's those who are arising. There are those mm. who are saying, you know what? Like God is radically saving them yeah. and they're rising up. We are seeing college campuses repent. Yeah. We are seeing baptisms like yep. never before. Yep. And that's huge. Yeah. Like the kingdom of God is not falling back. Right. Just because you see people in these schools acting crazy and they don't know their identity yeah. and things are happening, like whatever it is that's happening with the evil there's also good. Yep. I mean, good is happening. And there are so many people that are coming to the Lord right now and being more radically saved. And now it's like awakening. There's yeah. a lot of people who do have that fear of, you know what? I don't want to be left behind. Yeah. I don't want to stay here. I think another thing too is like similar to Job. Yeah. Um, you know, the worldly things, like the temporary things, yeah. this, this whole generation that's sucked into it, that's been deceived, right? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Um, they're in pain. Yeah. They're they in misery. It's true. They might act a certain way, but then when they go home, yeah. they have to lay their head down mm. and they feel it. Yeah. They know that th they feel the aloneness yeah. and the without purpose, you yeah. know? And I think similar to Job, God used a lot of bad things, yeah. right? To Make increase good. Job. Mm -hmm. And I think in the similar way, yeah. they have to hit rock bottom now because it's been going on for a while. I think they're starting to be like, Am I going to be like this forever? Right. right? Or they're just seeking mm -hmm. more, right? Yeah. Because they've run out of options. Mm -hmm. The devil's run out of cards. They're seeking more knowledge. Yeah. And that didn't happen before. People yeah. were not trying to open their Bible. They were trying to rely on a preacher once a week. Yep. And now people are like, okay, there's more. Yeah. I, I might need to read this book. Like, there's more. And so if there is one thing, you know, I started that the entire thing that I'm doing now, all of these baptisms, it's led up to this point. But I started out by showing people the Bible. Like yes. that has been my primary is read the Bible. And if you can't understand it here, I'll read it to you. Exactly. And that is how I've started all of the things that I'm doing is yeah. just getting the word to yeah. the people Yeah. because that is what's going to save them right. is to read the word read and the believe word. it. Yeah. And to know that God is here, that yep. God is not a thing of the past, yep. that he is real yeah. and that he can save them. And I think that now people are realizing it and they're waking up and they're hungry. And I think that that's where we're headed. And I feel like God is saying, feed my sheep. God is saying, 
um, you know, bring the lost prodigals home. Mm -hmm. And he is really teaching us now that it is so important that we are not stagnant, that mm. we are not just standing still, yep. that it is time now that we rally the troops. We're running out of time quick. I know. I think about John the Baptist all the time, obviously, because people say that to me all the time. Yeah, oh, like, I bet. Yeah. Literally, constantly. Yeah. But I think about, um, in the Bible, it talks about all the people from Jerusalem and Judea coming to him to be baptized, mm -hmm. right? And it says, literally, all of Jerusalem comes to John the Baptist. Yeah. And then it talks about when Jesus came. Like, it almost paints a picture of Jesus just showing up, you know, because obviously they didn't have cell phones to be like, yo, John, yeah. <laughs> can you baptize me? Yeah. It was just like he showed up. Yeah. And I think about it all the time, like, John must have never left the water. John must have literally, you know, like, he was raised in the wild, and he literally gave up everything. And yeah. he knew his mission was to pave the way for the Lord. And that's what he did. Yeah. And I feel like now, I just, I feel like that's my mission. It's been my mission for a while, is yeah. pave the way. Go out there and yeah. save the people, bring them to repentance, and prepare the way. Yes. The Lord is coming. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's so cool that I have a team now. I have a team of people that I love dearly. And a family. And a family. It is so much more than a ministry. It is, yeah. I'm going to cry. But it's so much more than a ministry to me. And all the people, it's so wild to think about, I've baptized most of them most of you yeah and then you get this calling on your heart to do more and it's not at this point it's not my purpose it becomes your purpose too right. and it becomes all of our mission and we are literally on the battlefield like god oh, is are. sending us Front forth lines. as a troop yeah and we're just like so connected because this is our purpose like we don't want the world anymore right. we're we've had it oh <laughs> we don't wow. want it no more <laughs> And now we just want to serve the Lord. Yeah. And so I don't know how fast we can do these right now. We're doing one a month right. because we're traveling so far. But who knows? Like it might come to a point where we're doing this even more often. Yeah. All I know is I want more. Me too. I want to save more people. I want to help as many people as I can find the Lord. Me too. Because this life is not it. It's not. Well, Michael, thank you so much for being on In the Water podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm going to see you in the water, in the water. Yes, yep. <laughs> um, because you are. You are such a big part of this ministry. You have shown so many people how to be happy and have a light side to what we're doing. There has been times that I have been in the water. I will be weary and I will look at you and you will be smiling. And I will be like, no, I'm, I'm going to be more like Michael because you chose joy. You choose joy in your sufferings. You choose joy in the times that we're baptizing. You've humbled yourself enough where God can use you. And it's so beautiful to all of us that see you. And I know that a lot of people that are watching this podcast or listening to this podcast, they're going to be excited to meet you in the water too. Because when you're in that water, there's more joy. Mm -hmm. There's more happiness. And we're just, we're happy to have you a big part of that, of our team. Yeah. Each one of us brings something different to this team. But a lot of yours is joy. And I know with your testimony and your past that you gave us, like I know that it's not always been joy in your life. Right. But how beautiful is it now that God has turned you into making other people have joy? Yep. And so thank you for being a part of our ministry. I can't wait to see where we go. I know we have lots more places, places with big spiders. Oh, <laughs> big spiders. But we're going to overcome it and we're going to be there for the people. Yeah, we will. And I just, I thank you so much for answering the call. I'll see you in the water soon. Yeah.